Well, welcome everyone from also from my side. Uh, my name is Thomas Maurer. I work as a cloud advocate at Microsoft. Uh, and so basically before you think, OK, this is just going to be evangelism, marketing or sales all over. Um, I have to correct that a little bit. We are actually part of the Azure engineering team, so we are part of the engineering organization in cloud and AI. And um, what our job is, is basically two main things if you want to know uh, on a higher level. Uh, one of them is actually creating and delivering content. These can be presentations like this, uh, speaking with our customers, creating learned content, creating documentation, creating tools and scripts and so on to, to actually make customers more successful with our product. Um, and that is probably the stuff you see. The other interesting part we are doing, and that, that is very important for me to, to let you know that, is that we actually gathering feedback from our customers to find out what is working, what is not working, and how can we improve? So please, please, please reach out uh, to the cloud advocates, uh, especially also to me in this scenario. Uh, if you have anything you want to talk about, um, I'm always happy to learn. Also ask the questions obviously in the chat. Um, I try to answer them. I always learn a lot by answering questions. Um, so for that, um, I want to actually talk about the topic of Azure Hybrid and especially I'm focusing on Azure Arc uh, in this scenario. I, I want to really give you an overview about what Arc can do because Arc can do many, many things. As Karsten mentioned and you probably heard before, uh, it has a very tight integration with Azure Stack HCI, but there's also a lot of other things you actually can do. Um, Arc really is not just a single feature solution. Uh, to tackle one of the different problems, but it allows a couple of different scenarios. And I promise you, I have a ton of demos, so I will I will go through these uh, in just a bit. But before we get there, uh, you have to go through a couple of slides with me, so bear with me. Um, this is all about setting a little bit of a stage and the idea why we are actually doing this. And so the first thing I wanna quickly talk about is why are we doing this? And what is the reason? Um, we try to address this. Uh, what we see from customers, and, and I'm sure you're seeing that in your environment too, is that um, customer environments are basically involving or getting more and more complex as well, right? And we looked at this and said, well, what are the driving factors which adding challenges? Like why, why are getting these environments getting more and more complex? So we found out that a lot of our customers run hundreds, if not thousands of different applications. And some of them can be written in very modern languages, um, running on past services, running on co in containers or serverless. But then you also have all these traditional applications which run in VMs or even on physical servers, right? And they're not going away so quickly. So this is this is something where IT uh, developers, IT pros, operations people, they all need to come together to actually manage all these apps. And that's that's a big, big part of what, of what you do. And then on the other side, we also see that a lot of customers are running in very diverse uh, settings and very with the very diverse infrastructure, right? A lot of customers have their own data centers. They use, for example, also service providers to like get some stuff out. They have edge locations, for example, like branch offices, retail stores, factories. I have some really cool cases where customers running factories all over the world, um, which uh, which especially can be addressed with all our hybrid solutions. But again, by having all these different infrastructure types, that also adds a, a ton of challenges and a ton of work you need to put into your environment. And then last but not least, um, we saw that like customers who drive in a multi-cloud environment, and sometimes it's really strategy, like that the customer says, well, I want to do multi-cloud because various reasons they do that. Um, uh, that's one thing, but then we also see customers, they started with one cloud provider and then they basically said, okay, well, Azure is now becoming our main cloud provider and which is by the way, a fantastic choice, of course. Um, but then you have to, have to actually manage multiple cloud providers. And you, as you know, if you work with cloud providers before, one cloud provider is already a lot of complexity, right? Can add a lot of knowledge. You need to add a lot of knowledge to actually operate a cloud environment with one cloud provider, but adding multiples of those, you add obviously even more complexity to it. So how can we help our customers um, making these things easier? Now, and again, this is my, I think my only marketing slide I have in there, hopefully. Um, 
But I want to use that slide because it shows a very good overview and it shows a couple of things uh, I want to mention um, uh, in this presentation. So first of all, we don't just have a single product which is hybrid, right? It's not just about Azure Stack. Um, it's not just about Azure Arc. It's all of these together. We understand that customers um, actually have different scenarios, different needs. And so we try to address these by giving them the solutions um, and services they actually need, right? I think that is that is a very important part um, uh, when you look at, at, at the Microsoft approach when it comes to hybrid and, and multi-cloud. The other thing is, and, and we really, as you can see from this slide, hybrid for us is not just something, well, we do on the side, right? We really believe, and Jason Sanders, the engineering lead of all of uh, um, Azure, he basically has all the engineering teams underneath him, uh, and he's directly reporting to Scott Guthrie. Um, he basically said in his keynote back at Microsoft Ignite in 2019, um, that hybrid is gonna be an end state for many of our customers, and not just an in-between state until they have everything moved to the cloud, right? So we really, from an engineering side, we really notice that like customers have different scenarios and different um, uh, different needs, basically, where they need to be in a hybrid environment. Even it comes to data sovereignty, network challenges, and many, many other things. So again, we have a huge portfolio of hybrid services, uh, starting with Azure IoT, for example. Like again, a whole new topic if you um, think about IoT services. Um, we have the tools to actually manage these, to actually deploy uh, these, uh, the applications to these ser services, gather data from these, and then actually do like some machine learning and other stuff with it. We also offer obviously our cloud inspired infrastructure with our Azure Stack HI portfolio or Azure Stack portfolio, I should say, with Azure Stack HCI, Azure Stack Hub, and Azure Stack Edge. Um, which again, you heard a lot about already in the Azure Stack HCI days about. But then we also have other things like with Azure Arc, and this is now really the first thing where Azure Arc comes in. So we understand that our customers uh, have reasons why they, for example, cannot use our Azure services in an Azure region, right? So if they can't use the Azure services in an Azure region, let's make the Azure services go to them, so to their location, so they can actually build their hybrid application, the hybrid solutions, uh, wherever they need them, right? So even if they want to run these services uh, outside of Azure, on premises, at the edge, or uh, even at another cloud provider, they can do that. Let's think, for example, about something like Azure SQL, right? Our customers love that love Azure SQL, and some of them tell us, "Look, we would love to use it, but we are too far away from this Azure region, or we don't have an Azure region in our country." Um, so and we have some data sovereignty challenges there. So let's, what can we do, right? And that is where Azure Arc comes in first. And we're going to have a look at this in just a bit. The other thing I want to talk about is the single control plane. Now you have all these different environments now. You have Azure, you have other cloud providers, you have on-premises, um, you have edge locations where you probably don't even have a good VPN connectivity and stuff like that. Um, and then you probably have a ton of different management tools, some management tools for Azure, some of them for on-prem, some of them for other cloud providers. Um, but what you actually want is to have this single control plane to actually see everything, get the visibility, as well as obviously then doing the management. And that is where Azure Arc, again, in these two cases, extremely shines. So when we, when I need to like explain Azure Arc into, for you in one sentence, it's actually extending the Azure management and Azure services to anywhere. So Azure, Azure Arc really is the bridge between Azure and everything which is outside of Azure, right? So if you think about you run services on-prem or a other cloud provider, this is actually like Azure Arc helps to bring these into the Azure management experience and also helps to bring Azure services to these locations. So you can see that here, uh, one of the, the three big uh, tasks Azure Arc does here is really helping us when it comes to operations, getting visibility um, for security compliance, but also for management and operations. Uh, it helps us obviously to uh, bring these Azure services to anywhere, as I mentioned already a couple of times. And then also, um, it also provides us like with tooling. So for example, if you, if you set this up for your environment, you can set it up that you can actually deploy these um, 
these the these cloud native applications like which you build maybe on Kubernetes or you build them on the Azure Pass services to basically set them up in any environment. And so this is what Azure R comes in. Now, let's if you look at the technical side, this is basically what I just like try to show you is with Azure, we actually provide that control plane and then we categorize this into uh, separate uh, scenarios. One is the Azure Arc enabled infrastructure, which allows us to connect servers and Kubernetes clusters and, and much, much more to the Azure control plane. So you can connect your existing servers for the management part. And then we also have the other thing which we call the Azure Arc enabled services, which again allows us to deploy Azure services outside of Azure. Now, instead of talking about this on the slides, let's just jump right in into a demo. And since I know a lot of you are familiar with Azure, um, but also a lot of that probably of you haven't really seen it before, so I'm going to show you a couple of things here first. So here I am in the Azure portal, and everything I'm showing you today is in the portal, but everything can also be used, like if you do infrastructure as code, if you use the CLI or PowerShell, you can also do that. Um, but for now, for the presentation part, it's the easiest to get to get the visibility in here. So here I'm on the all resources page, and you can see here everything in Azure is a resource. So everything is basically an object. Everything has a type from virtual machines to disks to IP addresses to databases. Even IP addresses are objects, right? And they're part of a resource group. And just let me do something here. Just want to make it a little bit easier for for everyone to see. Um, so you can see here every part is part of a resource group. It's basically deployed or connected to a location and it's part of a description and then have things like tagging to actually organize these. Now again, customers tell us this is actually great. This all comes with the Azure Resource Manager and this really helps us to organize and manage our resources in Azure, but they tell us, hey, um, we also have resources outside of Azure. How can we take advantage of this control plane with that? And that is where Azure Arc comes in. So let me show you something. If I want to have an overview about all my servers, doesn't matter where they're running, I can do that right now when I use Azure Arc. So basically what I have here is you can see here I already connected a couple of servers with Azure Arc. So I want to show all these Arc enabled servers. These are all the servers which are running outside of Azure. And then I want to see all my virtual machines which are running inside of Azure. So if I apply this filter, it's now just my servers. So it's all my servers in my complete environment. I can see them in one single location. You can see here the blue ones, my Azure virtual machines side by side with my Arc enabled servers, which are running in my local data center, basically underneath my desk here. But again, um, these are all like now in one place and I get that overview. I can see they're also part of a resource group. They're part of a description and I can even use tagging. So if I want to see, for example, what I do usually is I do cost center tagging. And so I can see, let's say if I want to see all my servers, which are just part of these three cost centers, I can apply that filter and now I get that view, right? So I can easily organize my servers here and group them basically using like tags and stuff like that or resource groups to do that. Now you would probably say Thomas, well this is this is great, but uh, <laughs> then there needs to be more. So there is more. So what I also can do here is I, I told you this is not just in the portal. I can also use things like for example the Azure Resource Graph um, to get go through this. So what I have here is it allows me to basically do queries using the keyword query language. So for example, if I want to do get the same list, I can do a query here and you can see here where I different resources, some of them with Microsoft.compute slash virtual machines. And then at the end we have Microsoft uh, as well, Microsoft.hybrid uh, compute slash machines, which are basically the Arc enabled servers. And if I run that query, I can basically get this list of servers here. So you can see all of these resources listed here. Now I can also go further and like let's say group. So if I want to if I have a manager which probably responds better to charts than to lists, I can also make this a little bit more graphical. So if I run this and I go to charts, I can also say okay I want to see how many servers do I have in Azure and how many servers do I have outside of Azure. So because I like donuts, let's do a donut chart here. 
Um, so you can see here in total, I have 32 different servers running in my environment. Um, I have 65% uh, running um, as Azure machines, but then I also have 34 here running as Arc machines as well. So pretty cool stuff I can do. Again, this is this is not like just a feature to show you, right? What I'd want to tell you here is by adding these servers using Azure Arc, and I'm going to show you how you can do that in just a bit. It's very simple. It's just done by an agent. Um, it actually becomes a native Azure resource, right? So it's really in the Azure resource manager and not just something we just pull up the name into the portal and that's it. We really make it an Azure resource so you can actually manage it like an Azure resource. Now, so you get all that visibility, but what if I want to do some more? And this is especially interesting if you deal with compliance um, and, and we have some cool stuff there uh, coming out as well. I will tell you some new stuff. So if you're not, <laughs> um, if you have worked with this before, there is more stuff coming. So when it comes to compliance and settings, we have something called Azure policy. And for those who don't really know what Azure policy is, it basically allows us to configure the Azure environment. So I can go out and basically say, hey, um, I want to basically only al allow people to deploy to specific Azure regions. I only want to let them use certain sizes of Azure virtual machines so they can't, for example, not everyone can go out and deploy our large MB2 series virtual machines with hundreds of cores, terabytes of memory and draining credit cards in seconds. Um, you can actually go out and limit that depending on on, on on what you want to do. Now, what a lot of people don't know is a feature called Azure Policy Guest Configuration. And that feature allows us to basically audit the operating system and settings of a Azure Virtual Machines and with Azure Arc, also for servers running outside of Azure. So think about this, like what this can become is like um, uh, group policies on steroids, right? So I'm gonna show you an example here. I'm gonna do an assignment here. Um, so I'm going to assign an initiative, which is basically just a group of policies. Um, I select the scope. In my case, I just do this on the subscription level. And then if I go to the initiative where I can actually select it, I have a couple of uh, possibilities here. So first of all, I can choose between a ton of built in definitions, um, which we offer you, which I will show you in a bit. But obviously, I can also create my own and we even have a tool to convert group policies to Azure policies. So check that out if you're interested in that. Now, again, this is by the way, more on the server side of things, but again, I, I'm gonna select now the, the built-in one. And you can see here, some of them are very technical. For example, let's say it should enable Azure Monitor for virtual machine scale sets, enable the Azure Monitor agent um, for VMs and stuff like that. But if I scroll down here, you can also see I have some industry specific ones. Um, so for example, this helps me if you if you if your company is dealing with, for example, ISO, uh, I can apply this policy to my environment and this will see if I'm actually compliant with I, with ISO certifications um, uh, for my Azure environment, but also inside how I did configure my uh, virtual machines, for example. And again, with Arc, also servers which are running outside of Azure. Now, in my case, I want to just check something very simple. I want to make sure that all my machines have secure password settings. So we can actually go out and audit machines for insecure password settings to find out uh, what's going on there. So I select this one. Uh, and then obviously I would give that assignment a better name, a description. And then on the next page, this, this wizard will just go guide me through it. But here I can actually now set up a new um, setting and say, hey, I don't just want to do this for Azure virtual machines. I also want to do that for Azure Arc enabled servers. And I'm going to set this to true and then it will basically uh, assign this policy um, to all of my servers living in that subscription in this case. Now this will then go out and audit my servers and um, will send the data back, but that will take a while, right? So um, instead of now waiting for this, like in a good cooking show, I already prepared uh, something here. So if I go to compliance, you can see a couple of things. You can first of all, you can see here that when I when I'm when, when it comes to compliance, I'm doing a horrible job. Uh, there's a lot of potential here for me to to do better. But the other thing you can see here is this policy. 
Now, this is the one I just showed you, right? Which goes out and audits my, my insecure password settings. If you scroll down, you can also see here um, what these policies are. So for example, like minimum password age uh, and so on. Um, and you can see here, like then at the end, how many resources are uh, compliant or not compliant with these different settings. But more importantly, if I'm responsible for compliance or if I want to know how my environment is doing, I can now go to non-compliant resources. And what I can see here is I can now see my Azure VMs and my servers running outside of Azure side by side, and I can figure out, okay, these are not servers which are not configured the right way. So this is pretty cool tool. Again, you can customize this. You cannot just do this for insecure password settings. There's a ton of other you, things you can use. For example, also like check for certificates which should not be on the machines or certificates which are missing uh, and much, much more. Now, before I'm going to show you how to onboard um, now service to Azure Arc and a little bit of like more of what you can do, uh, I want to quickly go jump back to the slides. So what I just showed you basically is if if this is a high level architecture of Azure and I want to show you how how I actually do this now. So we as Azure customers on the left side, we usually use tools and experiences as we call it at Microsoft to interact with Azure, right? So we use the portal, PowerShell, CLIs, APIs, the SDKs and so on. And what we're doing is we are actively interacting with Azure Resource Manager. Now this allows us basically to do role-based access controls, description management, tagging, indexing, search, policies, all that good stuff, and much, much more, which I just showed you uh, to do that. So this is actually the magic, how we manage Azure resources. And it's actually super interesting. If you ever have the chance to go into a deep dive talk about Azure Resource Manager, I highly recommend you do that. Um, but then we also offer a couple of management services. Um, for monitoring, update management, backup, security, and so on. Um, and in the past, basically before Azure Arc, this was this was completely designed to manage Azure resources, right? So everything which was in Azure, you could basically go out and, and, and manage using these tools. But as you can see on the bottom, our customers, we understand our customers do also have on-premises environments and they have multi like environments and other cloud providers. And until Azure Arc it was announced, they basically just used their local, like their existing local management tools to manage these. Now, what Azure Arc does, it basically bridges these resources also in the Azure Resource Manager. So you can start taking advantage of these management technologies. Now, very important, this doesn't mean you cannot use the existing tool you're using. We don't want to create a dependency. So you can still use absolutely your local management tools. So if you have System Center, if you have Windows Admin Center, um, you have like your Kubernetes tools, uh, your Data Studio, you can still keep using these as well, right? We don't want to have like, okay, this is this is now just Arc. Um, Arc just adds additional management capabilities if you need to, um, or for those who haven't used existing tools, um, they now get these management tools. So what can Azure Arc do? Azure Arc can, can actually, like when we when you look at the um, Azure Arc enabled infrastructure, we can actually bring these on-premises and multi-cloud infrastructure services into it. So we can enable Azure Arc servers or servers. Um, again, these can be Linux and Windows machines, virtual machines and physical machines, um, basically everything which is outside of Azure. And we, we support a couple of different operating systems. Uh, we can also bring in SQL servers for better uh, um, recommendations there when it comes to security. Uh, these again, these are your existing C and Microsoft SQL service you install in your environment or already have installed. And then we can also connect Kubernetes clusters. And again, this doesn't need to be, for example, a Microsoft flavor like AKS on Azure Stack HCI. It can be, but it can also be like OpenShift or Ranger or other, other basically uh, uh, Kubernetes distributions as well, uh, which you can then connect. Now, let me show you how that actually works. So if I'm in the Azure portal and I go to Azure Arc, this is our basically Azure Arc center. This is where you go if you did want to deal with anything Azure Arc related in the portal. Uh, you have the getting started guide and so on. And if we zoom in here on the left side, you can see here a couple of things. You can get an overview and we will talk about custom locations and data controller and so on in just a bit. You can also see here the infrastructure management. So under infrastructure management here, you can see I can manage servers, Kubernetes clusters, SQL servers, and obviously also Azure Stack HCI, 
With Azure Stack HCI has Azure Arc built in. So as soon as you register your Azure Stack HCI, it will show up here in the Azure portal as well. And you can then get benefits like monitoring and other stuff as well. On the bottom, we can see, and I will talk about that a little bit later, the Azure Arc enabled services. Now let's have a look at uh, servers here. If I click on servers, you can see here, these are all the servers I already have connected. Uh, you saw them before in the old resources list. Uh, if you want to connect the server, very simple. We help you uh, by creating a script for you, uh, but you can also just get that from the documentation page. It's actually pretty simple. It's downloading an agent. It's actually then installing that agent and then run a command to register that server with your Azure environment. Now we offer here a couple of scripts. Um, if you have just a single server you want to be onboarding, uh, the easiest way is just to basically create a script with a, uh, which gives you an interactive login experience, but that's obviously not very handy. If you want to automate that process and onboard multiple servers. So for that, you couldn't just use a service principle, uh, which basically allows you to just onboard a ton of different machines with that account, and it only has rights to onboard machines. Now, let me quickly go through that wizard here with you, because here we can also see what are the prerequisites to install that and use Azure Arc with Arc enabled servers. Now, first of all, um, the Arc enabled service needs outbound connectivity from your network. Now, this can be on this is, this is on port 443 to specific Azure endpoints, and you can find the URLs here in the documentation. Um, I, that said, you can also use now a private link setup. So in this case, if you have a VPN to add to your Azure network, or if you have Express Route in place, uh, you can also go through that. So you don't have, if you go in the case of Express Route, this means you don't go through the public internet. Even though you go through the public internet, by the way, it's still obviously encrypted. Um, so no one can actually see that. But if you want to really be like, okay, I want to use my Express Route for this, I can do that as well using the Azure Arc private link scope uh, here. Uh, and then obviously I need to have local administrative rights um, to install that agent one time. Uh, so that is basically what I need um, for that server. And then I also need a resource group obviously uh, to onboard these servers. And next you can see I need to select the subscription. I need to select a resource group to join that server. I need to basically select the Azure region. In my case, I'm selecting Western Europe. And then I choose the operating system of that server because that is then helps me generate the script if it's a PowerShell or a shell script for Linux. Uh, and then here you can see the connectivity mode. So I really want to highlight this because it's pretty new. So if you have played around with Azure Arc um, a year ago, uh, we have a couple of new options again with the private endpoints I just mentioned. You can also be behind a proxy. Um, so if you're behind that, that's also fine. Uh, and we help you set this up. We also give you some recommendations when it comes to tagging but you can also use your custom tags and you can always change these later on. So at the end, you just basically get your script, which again downloads the agent, installs the agent, uh, and then basically runs a command to register it. And then let's have a look on a machine here. Um, just a second, oops. I'll go to that machine. So here I have an Azure Arc enabled server. Uh, I already run that script on this machine so it's already showing so we don't need to do all the login stuff and so on so here is the name of that server it's app01 um, if i now go in into this i get a new process running so i have this process now and this is also the by the way the one you can find on azure stack hci uh, where it's already built in but this one here is just a regular windows server by installing the arc agent you get that process and then you get the Azure connected machine agent, uh, as we call it. Um, it also gets this little CLI here, uh, which helps you actually do the connect, do the disconnect, right, uh, and get some additional information. Now, if I show you some additional information, I can run the show command. And this now is very handy if you want to know, okay, to which um, Azure resource group or subscription is the server now connected to. You can also see the Azure resource name. You can also say, okay, this is connected to that specific Azure location. Um, again, um, this is an additional like information here as well. Now, also very important, I want to highlight this as well. Uh, this also gets a ID. Like, so this server now, um, by installing the Azure Arc enabled server, gets a managed identity. 
Now, if you're familiar with that, this is an object in Azure Active Directory, which you could use, like could, could use before, for example, for uh, service running in Azure, for doing like logging or authenticating against Azure Active Directory, right? And you could just use the machine object instead of having some passwords laying around or something to authenticate. So with that, you, if you build applications, if you build some certain tooling, um, you can now use that um, managed identity. So that is pretty cool. Um, and, and we use that also in a lot of different scenarios here as well, which I'm going to show you in just a bit. So if I go back to the portal, after installing that agent, it will take a couple of seconds, I think, uh, to like show that server. And if I go down, I will use this server here now because here I enabled all the different features. If I click on this server now, you can see here it looks like an Azure resource. It looks like this server is running in Azure. However, um, again, it's part of a resource group, it's part of a subscription, but you also get some additional information here. So in this case, I'm having a Windows Server 2019 server, uh, and you can see here it's part of a local uh, Active Directory domain. It doesn't need to be domain joint, so if you don't have a domain, that's absolutely fine. And then you can see here I can use a couple of tags here um, as well. Now, what I get here as well is now um, role-based access control. So I can now use Azure um, Active Directory to provide access to, this, to the people who actually need access to that server. So if this server is managed, for example, let's say by the SharePoint administrators, I can enable the group of SharePoint administrators to see that object in the Azure portal or in the CLI uh, as well. Now, we have customers now, they take away basically all the local administrative rights of most of their administrators, and they just provide them with rights using the Azure portal. Now, the advantage here now is very easy. Like, very quickly, you get the single control plane, you get an activity log, so you can see who did actually do the change to this server and so on. Now, let's speak a little bit about tooling. So what you can do is you can enable security center, so you can automatically get um, recommendations for that server from Azure Security Center. So it will tell you what you actually should do. And it also gives you different um, priorities on what you should focus on. You can also then use extensions. So if you're familiar with Azure VMs, uh, we have this concept of extensions, which allow you to run different stuff uh, on the agent. And so there's one, for example, the custom script extension, which I could now go and I could just deploy a script or run a script against that specific server directly from, from the Azure portal. And if I go back, I get a ton of other, a lot of other administrative stuff. I get, for example, the log analytics configuration. Now you will probably say, Thomas, well, we had log analytics before. Uh, true, but there it was very limited um, like to how you could use role-based access control. You basically need to give every admin who needs to access to the log, um, access to the log analytics workspace. And that meant basically you could see logs of everything which is going in there. Now, in this case, you can see here the scope is just limited to that specific server. So I, I can only see the logs from that specific server in this case. And so I could do a query and get, for example, all the security events from that server. And again, I can add the event logs or sys logs and so on and get all the logs I want to up there if I need to, right? I can configure that what I want to be uploaded. I can also start using monitoring. This is super interesting. So if you're familiar with Azure Monitor, this is probably nothing new. But again, this is a server running outside of Azure. And so you get all these benefits from Azure Monitor. You can monitor the disk space, CPU utilization, memory utilization, um, disk performance uh, metrics, um, as well as like uh, networks throughput and so on. And you get all that data in here uh, as well. You can then also set up alerts uh, for that. So you can basically get alerted um, as you would do for Azure machines as well. And then what I think is pretty cool is the dependency um, part. So you can actually see what clients are connecting to that specific server. So if I open this up, you can see here, I have like different clients connecting through that server, to that server. And then I can also see where this server is actually connecting to, on which ports, um, the server is connecting to different servers or what I would say endpoints is probably a better name for that. So if I look at, for example, port 443, you can see here connects to a couple of public IP addresses and endpoints here. And the last one here in the list 
is, for example, also the one of the ARC endpoints. So you can see here that this server, that this is obviously the ARC agent running on the machine, connecting to that endpoint. Uh, so that is pretty cool stuff. You also get, um, I'm going to quickly go through this, change tracking uh, to see that. You get inventory, so you can basically go and see what software is installed on that machine. You can see here a couple of updates. You can also do update management now. So if you want to do install updates on these machines and centralize and manage them from Azure, you can do that as well. So you can see here, these are the missing updates on that machine. So I just highly like urgently patch these machines. So I can just schedule a new update deployment, give that a name. And I detected that this is a Windows machine. So I can then say reboot if required, define the maintenance window, and then say update now, which would mean like in five to 10 minutes. Or I could schedule this because I'm doing a presentation and you probably don't want to do an update during business hours. Uh, I can actually schedule it for later. I can even make it a recurring um, task. So I can say every Tuesday night, I want to patch that server. Um, I can then select what updates and what update classifications I want to install. I can run a pre and a post script. And then I get a summary and, and basically said, OK, create that update deployment job. Now you say, OK, Thomas, I have hundreds of servers. This is a little bit silly. I don't want to do that hundreds of times. Yes, so we got you covered. Um, if you go here to manage multiple machines, you will just get it to the Azure Automation account because it uses the update management solution in Azure Automation, where you can now see here all my servers which are joined to that, which are enabled. These are um, Azure servers as well as non-Azure servers using Azure Arc, for example. And I can then also do an update uh, deployment here. In this case, the difference is just instead of having a single VM to get updated, I can select a group of servers um, to get updated and then basically have the updates installed. The same, by the way, for inventory and change tracking as well. So that is what I can do. Uh, what, and, and obviously, there's more features what I can do with Azure Arc enabled servers. The other thing I want to show you here is the same thing for Kubernetes clusters. So if you manage Kubernetes clusters, such as AKS on Azure Stack HCI, they will show up in the Azure portal and they look like similar as an AKS cluster would look like. So if I click one of these, you can also see here again, looks like an Azure resource. I can see which version is installed and so on. I can then also get log analytics, monitoring uh, for that Kubernetes cluster. So you can see here um, what's going on. So the node CPU utilization, I can also go in uh, and monitor the different containers running on that um, Kubernetes cluster. And then I can use uh, security center extensions, as I showed you before, policies. But then I want to show you something called GitOps. So GitOps really allows us to basically configure that server. And what we do is we store the configuration of the, the Kubernetes cluster um, or uh, your, your applications in a Git repository, right? We store the application there, we store the configuration of it there. And then what we do with Azure Arc, we tell them, hey, in that Git repository down here, for example, um, there is a application configuration you should get and pull down. In this case, we do that every three seconds, which is like a little bit extreme. Um, you will not do that in production, but you will thank me that I do this for the demo and we don't wait like 30 minutes for it to happen. Um, so I configured that already. So now let's have a look at the application here. So here is the application. If I do a refresh, it basically says, hello, Azure, right? So this is the application and I, you can see here, I took all my web design skills uh, to create that application. Now let's do a couple of changes. So what we can do here is we can go to that Git repo I just showed you. And this is basically the application configuration here. So I have a Helm chart uh, here. Um, basically tell me, OK, this is the container you're going to use. This is going to be the application you're going to use. And then I can set up the replication count of how many containers I want to run. And then I configured my application that I can simply change the message here. So don't do this at home. I'm going to do now a commit directly to the main or master branch to say hello. Azure Stack, oops, Azure Stack HCI days. Um, since I'm still a good admin, at least a little bit, I'm going to do here a commit message, and then you can see I do that directly to the master or main branch. Again, you would obviously not do that. You can use multiple branches and then use approval steps and so on uh, to do that. But again, uh, for the sake of the demo, I'm going to do it that way. 
Now you can also check in the like write the code using Visual Studio Code and so on as well. Uh, so if I go back um, to the portal, obviously you can still again have a look at the configuration I, I did here. So I said, okay, this is the Git repo I just showed you, but there is the application stored uh, and the path and all that. So what I can now do if I go back to the application and then hit refresh, you can now say, see here, it changed the application to hello Azure Stack HCI. Now again. This is you might think, OK, well, for one application on one Kubernetes cluster, well, it's still a good thing to do because you get all the benefits of the Git deployment. You have different versioning. You have everything in place. You can actually see you can buy, um, build approval steps and so on. But the power really comes if you manage, for example, now multiple Kubernetes cluster running that application. Uh, for me, there's no big difference if I do this application deployed at once or if I do it a thousand times. Uh, it will work in the same fashion as well. So that is GitOps, and so it's pretty cool uh, feature here as well. Um, so what we can do here, I'm going to quickly go through that. Um, Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes, as I showed you, similar features with govern and security features, policies, security center, role-based access control, and all that. But then also, obviously, the uh, GitOps configuration. Um, so to actually configure the application part or also the, the state of the um, uh, of the Kubernetes cluster. Again, this works with different Kubernetes clusters uh, as well. And then I can also, for example, use a connect tool to actually connect to that Kubernetes cluster using the agent. So instead of like having a VPN connection uh, wherever that Kubernetes cluster is placed, for example, I can just go over the Azure CLI basically and use a command called uh, kubeconnect uh, to actually connect to that Kubernetes cluster and run uh, kubectl uh, commands there. So now I spoke a lot about the um, Azure Arc enabled infrastructure because I think that is what people most are interested about at, in, in this scenario. But then there's also the Azure Arc enabled services. And what they do is, as I mentioned, they allow you to run Azure services outside of Azure. And what we enabled, uh, what we have right now is the Azure application services. So this allows you to deploy app service such as web apps, uh, functions, logic apps, APIs, event grid, and so on outside of Azure, right? So think about if you build an application with using web apps or functions or logic apps, you can also do that now and deploy that even on premises or at other cloud providers, which is pretty cool. Um, this then, uh, is obviously not the only thing you want to do. Uh, a lot of applications also need databases. And again, customers tell us they love Azure SQL. And we allow you with Azure Arc enabled data services to run Azure SQL managed instances outside of Azure. So you could actually run this now. You could set up Azure Stack HCI and then on top run AKS on Azure Stack HCI. And on top of that, you can then run Azure SQL managed instances or web apps and so on. And I will show you in a quick graphic how that looks like. But before we jump in into that, let me quickly show you the demo how that uh, what I just told you. So you can see here my Kubernetes clusters, which I just showed you, which I manage. So I tried, I connected two of these clusters as or registered them as custom locations. So you can see here I called one of the custom locations. I called other cloud provider 01. So you can guess that this cloud, this cluster is running. This is actually a Kubernetes cluster running another cloud provider, and then I have one Kubernetes cluster um, running in my own data center. So what I can do is I can now go and deploy a new web app uh, directly here. So let's do a new app service deployment, and again, this is exactly the same wizard as you would do in Azure uh, One. So the only thing I need to select here is uh, the resource group, and then I could give this a name. Okay. Ace. I hope that doesn't exist yet. And then again, could select the runtime stack and so on and, and what I'm running. But the most interesting part is now here where I select the Azure region. So you have obviously all the Azure regions where you can deploy to, but on top you get now the custom locations. So you, there's just two um, Azure Arc uh, enabled Kubernetes cluster show up here as other cloud provider 01 and Thomas data center 01. So I can now select, okay, let's deploy this web app, for example, to Tom's Thomas data center, which is obviously not an Azure region, <laughs> not for now, um, but then just deploy that web app here. I could go through that and create that. Again, very simple. I can also do that using ARM templates, BICEP, 
Um, I, if I use tooling in Visual Studio Code, I can also do that. So it's not just about the portal, but uh, you get the idea of how it works best in the portal. So now this enables you and like your developers, your architects, your IT administrators to deploy these applications using your existing tooling um, outside of Azure. So you can use that on Azure Arc enabled infrastructure. You can deploy that to Azure Arc enabled data services, which includes Azure SQL, Postgres, or even Azure like Azure Machine Learning. And then we also have Azure Arc enabled application services like web apps and so on. Now, as I just mentioned, you can run them in your own data center. Again, the only thing you need do need is a Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you don't have the expertise and you don't want to actually have just like a Kubernetes cluster on, uh, like setting up everything by yourself and so on, you can take advantage of AKS, our Azure Kubernetes service on Azure Stack HCI, which we also I saw in the agenda. We have a couple of awesome sessions um, for this as well. This allows you to actually basically set up Azure Stack HCI and then that allows you to run Windows and Linux VMs, running different types of applications. But it also allows you to run a Kubernetes cluster based on AKS on Azure Stack HCI. That allows you then to run containers or Azure Arc enabled services, such as data services or web apps or logic apps and so on. Um, and then you can basically deploy your cloud native applications on top of that. And all of that is managed using Azure Arc. So that is this, the integration we have here. And you can again can see how Azure Arc really can integrate all of the stuff outside of Azure into Azure to make your life easier. Now, if you want to know more about this, I have a couple of resources laid out here, uh, which are very important um, uh, to go through. We have a couple of awesome things. The thing I really want to highlight is the cloud adoption framework. And I even quickly want to show that because now we have a scenario for hybrid and multi-cloud environments. So if I go here, I already opened up the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework. This is basically um, proven guidance we created with partners, um, with our customers, with the product groups, engineering and field teams. And it goes about technology stuff to set up how to a migration, how to set up landing zones, but also about strategy and how you set up your organization, right? That you're successful with your cloud deployment. Now, many of you are hopefully familiar with this, but what I want to show you, which is new, uh, is actually the different adoption scenarios. Now we have one for hybrid and multi-cloud uh, scenarios. And in this one, we really go through like all the stuff or, or even more than the stuff I just talked about, right? It goes through, okay, why would you do hybrid and multi-cloud? Um, an introduction of the unified operations that like the thing like I showed you with the control plane, it explains the idea of the control plane. And then obviously it does a link here to the different Azure uh, services and how you would use them. And there's much, much more as you can see here on the left. Also our hybrid cloud architectures in the architecture center and much, much more uh, you can relate to. And then obviously we have a ton of cool stuff on Microsoft Learn um, for you, where you can go through and learn more about Azure Arc. And with that, um, I want to say thank you. And um, I hope we have a couple of questions in the chat. Hi, Thomas. Yeah, thank you for the great presentation. Uh, I really liked it. Great slides and great demos. We have some questions lined up i have three so far and if there are more we have still 10 10 minutes to go so i will read the first one if an on-prem server has the azure arc agent installed does it mean it can also leverage azure conditional access and mfa to enable admins to manage it so and you can read this you can read them too if you don't understand yeah. me there in the q a part <laughs> No, no, I, I think I understood you pretty well. And I, I think the question is a, is a very good one. So the way it currently works, the login, obviously we don't take away your log by default. We don't take away your logins to that server, right? So if you set up your local administrators, you use Active Directory administrators, you still be able to log in and do all of that stuff. But obviously we have customers who say, well, now I, I just want to use the management tools or provide my admins with the management tools we have in Azure. So they don't need to log in directly to that machine anymore. We probably still have breaking glass accounts and stuff like that, but um, in general, they, they just need to go and deploy scripts and we can actually do that over Azure or they need to like basically look at the monitoring or 
uh, the event log or whatever. And so as soon as you switch over to uh, to that model, you obviously can then use MFA with your Azure Active Directory accounts when you log into the Azure portal or the Azure CLI or where, however you're going to manage it. Um, the, the question is like, if you want to then use MFA and stuff like that to locally log into your Windows server, is a very interesting one. Um, so I will definitely keep that keep that in mind. Okay, so not yet, but maybe in the future. Okay, so what additional costs do I have when I enable Arc for on-prem servers or Azure Stack HCI? Well, the cost is of course important. Great services need some money. You need some money for that, right? I absolutely waited for that question. Uh, this question always comes <laughs> up and, and it, it's great. I, that's why I actually go quickly to the portal here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm still sharing. Yes, uh, I will. Yeah, if, you are. Perfect. If I do, uh, I quickly, you can always find this information on the on the pricing page of Azure, but if you're in the portal here with, in the Azure Arc Center, you also have a pricing button. And now the cool thing comes. So if I look at servers here, which was the question, joining a server by default and making a look up in, in, in Azure and using tags and the resource graphs, using extensions like the script extension and so on, that is free. So there's no additional cost to do that. As soon as you then start using other Azure services like Azure Defender, Azure Monitor, uh, Log Analytics, Security Center, and all of that, there's obviously, like for Azure servers, additional costs involved, and you can find like what these costs are. But they're not different in this case from, from Azure servers. The only thing which is different is the policy part. So Azure policy um, is free for Azure uh, servers. But for Azure Arc enabled servers, we gave you some extra costs for that. So if you want to try it out today and you don't use any of these additional services, uh, you can actually uh, start using it and testing it, just the role based access control, the visibility, and so on. Uh, and then as soon as you enable these services on the machine, you will actually get built for that. So to clarify, same, okay, sorry, uh, Thomas, for the policies for. I Azure Stack HCI nodes, is it included or also an additional cost? Do you know that? I don't know if there is any difference currently in terms of Azure Stack HCI nodes. Um, I guess, um, and this is just a guess, don't quote me on that. I need to double check on this. Um, I guess for that is also a charge in place if you want to do it for the Azure Stack HCI nodes. However, I, I need to double check on, on okay. this with an indifference. But you wanted to talk about Kubernetes and the other stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. Just I'm interrupting you. No worries. So that's why you're here. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, of course, there's also like for the Kubernetes part, similar thing. If you just connect up your Kubernetes cluster as well, this can be again AKS on Azure Stack HCI. Uh, you connect that up, uh, basically connects to three. But then if you start using additional stuff like the configuration part, using GitOps and so on, um, uh, you will uh, have different costs involved. There's also some regards to like on Azure Stack HCI, which probably has uh, no charge for the for these kind of certain things, right? So if you, for example, have if you connect an OpenShift cluster, which is nothing to do with that, then there are some charges. If you run, for example, AKS um, on Azure Stack HCI and so on, um, you have different different things you pay for um, in this case uh, for the configuration part, right? So that is pretty awesome. And then for the data services part. Uh, we, since these services are in preview, which is actually not 100% true, I need to investigate on this one. Um, they are basically no cost because they're in preview, but actually we already launched a couple of the data services part. Could be that I'm in the preview portal where not everything has changed yet, but uh, um, yeah, there's obviously some costs if you deploy these services. Okay, I have another question for you. Uh, given that Arc can bring Azure management and operation benefits to any infrastructure, what are the benefits of using it with Azure Stack HCI versus other on-premises infrastructures? So for servers to manage, like for, for general servers, um, I would say there isn't really a, a benefit like just for Azure Arc management purposes when it comes to just the, the guest VMs on top of it, right, at the moment. Um, However, obviously Azure Stack HCI, like if you look at the nodes monitoring, if you look at this, like this stuff, uh, which uh, which is Azure Stack HCI related, which is also Azure Arc, there you obviously get the benefit to also have that right into 
um, uh, the portal. And I think Cosmos talked about this or will talk about it in the roadmap. There is a couple of awesome things coming there with the Azure Arc uh, connections of Azure Stack HCI. Um, but again, it, this is designed like in general, if you just install the agent in the guest VMs, um, it doesn't really think about what is what is it running on, right? It doesn't care so much about this. It cares about the operating system where it's in. Um, and so we also have that available for other other uh, service running, even on physical nodes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have three minutes left. I think I think I have two more questions. Is it possible to use Azure Bastion services for Azure Arc managed on premises server? <laughs> I I love this question. Next to the pricing question, this is the other question always coming up. Uh, okay. Uh, um, Let's put it that way. Nothing to share. And I have it two times, point. actually. I have it two times. <laughs> that are the two questions. Um, currently, I, we get we heard that feedback a lot. Let's put it that way. Um, we don't have anything uh, public announced yet, um, but it's it's definitely an interesting scenario. Mm 